What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the top 10 celebrities you did not know are Canadian. Or should I say celebrities I did not know are Canadian, which I expect to happen a lot here. And I'm, 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 I'm assuming a lot of Canadians actually are very aware of Canadian celebrities, Canadian actors, but for some reason, every time in America, when Americans figure out a, cele a celebrity is Canadian, we're like, what, huh, what? I, I have no idea. And it's, <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, I mean, there's not much difference between uh, Americans and Canadians at all. We sound exactly alike, we act alike, you know. It shouldn't be all that surprising. Now, when Americans find out that a celebrity or an actor is from the United Kingdom or they have a British accent, like Christian Bale, Batman. When I heard that, I was like, what? What is going on? <laughs> you know, that, because that's like a whole accent change. That's a huge undertaking. Whereas with uh, Canadians, it's more of just like this fun fact where we're like, really? They're from Canada. I had no idea. But there's really no reason that we shouldn't assume they're from Canada or, or from the United States. You know, it's perfectly reasonable, perfectly common. And uh, I'm aware of a few Canadian celebrities. I feel like the, the one I know the most is Drake, who, who I actually, I just watched Drake growing up in Degrassi, The Next Generation, seriously, as a cast in Degrassi, the, the TV show. And then he became a famous rapper, and I was like, what? The, the guy from Degrassi? became a rapper and now now he's known as a rapper and I so I knew he was Canadian cuz that's a Canadian show and of course uh Justin Bieber <laughs> for some reason all Americans know that uh maybe for good reason cuz he is incredibly famous and it was bound to come out his his hidden secret that he's Canadian anyway <laughs> I'm very interested to see what other uh individuals on this list are Canadian. I, I think it'll be quite entertaining. So I'm ready to find out. Here we go. Ten celebs. You oh, might want to rewind it. Here we go. Uh, Seth Rogen? Any opportunity to enrich the lives of the Canadian people is an opportunity I will take. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top ten. I'm sorry, but Seth Rogen's on, on the list? Seth Rogen has been a part of so many movies that are such iconic classics in America now um, that I really did assume he must just be an American based on that fact. See, I said it doesn't make sense for me to assume this, but I don't know why. It's just something Americans tend to do with celebrities. We just think everyone's from the United States for some reason. I don't know why that is. And celebs you didn't know are Canadian. Oh, you're Canadian? I'm Canadian. You're, I get, yeah, we all got Stupid, useless Canadian money. But she just it thinks is. of us as America's hat. Don't get, don't get it twisted. You are America's fun, sweet hat. See? For this list, we're looking at those famous folks that you might not have known were born in the second largest country in the world. Yeah. So grab yourself a bag of ketchup chips and a box of Smarties and pour yourself a glass ketchup, of milk. Ketchup chips. Ketchup chips and Smarties. Do Canadians love Smarties as well? Is that a thing? I like Smarties. Are Smarties that I'm thinking of the same that Canadians are thinking of? The little tiny pills? I don't know. <laughs> milk from a bag and leave us a comment about your favorite Canadian celebrity. Milk from a bag. <laughs> yeah. Milk like from a bag. Hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Okay. Why are they why are they trying to make me Okay, they want to promote their song. I get it. More cupcakes. How many Canadians can say they've been nominated for 16 choice awards? Shay Shay Mitchell. I'm not actually familiar with this actress. Maybe she's not in the types of shows I would watch, I'm guessing. More cupcakes. How many Canadians can say they've been nominated for 16 Choice Awards? Well, we know of at least one, and her name is Shay Mitchell. Okay. Yup. This pretty little liar is a pretty not-so-little, as she stands 5 feet 7 and a half inches, Canadian. And what's the biggest difference? I feel like I might have heard of Pretty Little Liar. 
I've definitely never watched it, though. Now, you've lived in the States, obviously, for a while. What's the biggest yeah. difference between the States and Canada, in your estimation? Ah, uh, the words that you guys have. So, like, sorry and sorry. I, I say it like how it's so, spelled. Born. Okay. See, I'm just now coming to terms with the fact that Canadians don't say a boot as much as I thought. Uh, it's been very hard for me to cope with that. <laughs> uh, but Canadians do say sorry instead of sorry. I think that one's true. I'm sticking to that one. You can't tell me that's not true. Born in Mississauga, Ontario, this beauty was traveling the world as a model in her teens and got her big acting break when she was cast as Emily Fields in Pretty Little Liars. Mm. Emily, when did you get back? <laughs> Yesterday. Okay. <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you. Besides acting and modeling, this talented Canuck co-wrote a young adult novel titled Bliss in 2015. Number nine, good. Aaron and Sean Ashmore. Given that they're twins, if you knew that- Yeah, yeah, I gotta pause this. Uh, every- lots of Americans know Aaron and Sean Ashmore from X-Men. And only X-Men. Although, maybe he was in some other stuff I just don't know about. So I won't say that. But I know him from X-Men. And I learned that he had a twin brother. And they really look a lot alike. Yeah, so I am familiar with him, and I certainly did not know he was Canadian, or that he had a twin brother for a long time. One of them was Canadian, you could have surmised that the other one was as well. However, there are probably many fans who aren't aware that either of these talented bros was born in the Great White North. Johnny, yeah. Johnny, I'm warning you. Then where are the farms? The identical twins were born in British Columbia but raised in Ontario, and have both found a good amount of individual success in Hollywood. Oh. Yeah, I think when the when a Canadian actor kind of has massive success in Hollywood in the United States, then Americans just immediately start thinking, "Oh, they must uh, they must be American. They just must have grown up in the United States." Uh, that's like our default school of thought about famous. Hollywood actors. I get it. However, while they've both been acting since the late 80s, early 90s, this is one of the few times they've actually worked together. The twins played, oh. yep, twins, in a season three episode of Fringe back in 2010. But you're huh. free now. It took me longer than I thought, but I never gave up. Number eight, Nathan Fillion. Yeah. <gasps> Nathan Fillion. This is one of those actors who I feel like everyone has seen. You know the, an actor where you've seen everywhere? You've seen him in every movie, but you don't quite know who he is or his name? That's Nathan Fillion. So I, I've seen him in a million places. I never knew he was Canadian, especially since he's so... When I see him, it's for a TV show like about police. Like American police or detectives. The Rookie, maybe? So I really thought it was like a very American show. So this surprises me. Oh, look at that. Andy's picking the tomatoes out of his salad just like I do. While Fillion has had American citizenship since 1997, he's okay. had Canadian citizenship his entire life. As a nation, we are stereotyped as being pleasant and <laughs> kind and sweet and easygoing. Yeah. And these are all true. Those stereotypes do exist in Canada. Aha! And I love it. Born in Edmonton, <laughs> Alberta, Fillion did both his high school and university studies in the oil-rich province. Nathan might be most widely known these days for his starring roles in Castle. Castle! Yes! I have heard of this. Which ended in 2016, <laughs> and The Rookie, which... The Rookie. This is why I thought he was American. Because The Rookie, it's like the most American show you can, it's like about cops having a good old time, you know. Premiered just a couple of years later. You make it sound easy. Piece of cake. Really? Mm -hmm. However, to many of us, including Leonard Hofstadter and Raj Kuthrapali, he will always be Captain Malcolm Reynolds. And oh. as far as the experience goes, Fillion himself has called the Firefly gig the best acting job he ever had. Now you can luxuriate in a nice jail cell, but if your hand touches metal. Huh. I swear by my pretty floor bonnet, I will end you. Number I haven't seven, seen that. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. This one really does surprise me. Because he really has been a massive part of a lot of uh, Americans' lives. A lot of young Americans, not so young Americans now. <laughs> a lot of his movies came out in the last 20 ish years. Hilarious comedies. Just such cornerstones of American popular culture that I definitely would never have thought that he was not 
in fact, from the United States. I just wouldn't have thought that. Fascinating. Today, I like... Sat in my car, I smoked like 10 doobies. We don't know if it's irony, <laughs> coincidence. Yeah, everything he says is such like perfect American comedy. Like he defined comedy in America for a long time. So this one really surprises me. Evidence or something else entirely, but it's true. One of the most famous pot smokers in the world comes from the home of some of the best pot in the world. Wow. Actor, producer, director Seth Rogen lives in Los Angeles now. But the Knocked Up star was born and raised in the beautiful city of Vancouver, British Columbia. Cool. I am honestly always looking for ways to participate in Canadian culture and to put the spotlight on Canada. I, I mention Canada a lot in our our movies and our work i try i play canadian characters often hmm. rogan started as That's a stand-up cool. comic at a young age and when he was 13 god look at him that <laughs> i've never seen him that young he co-wrote the rough script for super bad with evan goldberg super bad exactly super bad lots of other stuff classics classics with whom he began a friendship after they met while attending bar mitzvah classes together two friends with a talent to make people laugh and just cocky enough to think they might be able to make films. <laughs> Number six, Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams. I feel like I've heard this before. Rachel McAdams is certainly in the last 20-ish years, I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to be wrong on some of this. She was a massive, massive uh, movie star in America. You saw her everywhere. She was huge. She was in Mean Girls. Uh, iconic movie for a lot of people in America. Yeah, no, uh, I feel like maybe I heard that she was Canadian at some point. I don't know. You want to do something fun? You want to go to Taco Bell? I can't go to Taco Bell. I'm on an all-carb diet. God, Karen, you are so stupid. While the rest of the world became aware of McAdams in 2004 when she starred in Mean Girls and The Notebook, yeah. her fellow yeah. Canadians already knew who she was. Before really? making it big in Hollywood, the London, Ontario product had made a name for herself in Canadian movies and television, including her Gemini award-winning performance in Slings and Arrows. See, this makes sense to me. I would think this would be true of a lot of Canadian actors, although maybe they get their big break in a lot of Hollywood or American productions. But I would assume a lot of them started in, in productions in Canada and were known in Canada first. But I guess it kind of depends on just where you get your work, where you start, what, what opportunity you get. McAdams has since gone on to a very impressive career on the silver screen, mm -hmm. earning multiple awards and a spot in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with her role in 2016's Doctor Strange. Yeah. Where are you going? Um. Yeah, Americans really love Rachel McAdams. She's like an American sweetheart, truly. You tell me the truth? Number five, Elliot Page. Oh, yeah, I definitely didn't know Elliot Page was Canadian. Been in a ton of stuff in the United States, for sure. Yeah, very famous. With breakout roles in Hard Candy and Juno, Page went from a known Canadian actor to a star across both sides of the 49th parallel. It's actually, it's really complicated, okay? And I don't feel like talking about it in my fragile state. In yeah, now Elliot's known for, well, X-Men. Jeez, a lot of classics a while ago, like Juno. Um, Umbrella Academy. Yes, I've seen some of these. For the younger generation, the actor is probably best known for playing number seven in the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. That's mm -hmm. funny, because I was just about to say the same thing. Elliot was born in the beautiful city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, and okay. is the only Eastern Canadian on the list. In okay. 2021, Elliot became Time Magazine's first openly trans man cover feature. How did that right. feel to be on that cover with your powerful words, I am fully who I am? Have you felt the liberation of that, the joy of that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible s sensation that I am experiencing, and it keeps unfolding. Number four, Matthew hmm. Perry. You, know, you never know what's going to end up happening. You go Wait, Matthew Perry? Oh my gosh. This is probably 
especially for fans of fr Friends. I mean, Friends is iconic in the United States. Maybe, maybe a lot of these are very popular in Canada. I haven't even considered that. Uh, I don't know what popular shows are going on in Canada, or if a lot of the stuff made in the United States ends up being popular in Canada as well. I'm positive that that happens. But, man, the Friends nation, the Friends world, uh, <laughs> the army of Friends lovers, um, <laughs> definitely exists in, in America. To this day, still growing, everyone loves it. It will never die in Matthew Perry. I mean, Friends in the United States is just considered so iconic, like, just an iconic American show. One of the most of all time. Maybe the most iconic. So, in that sense, it surprises me that one of its uh, main cast is a Canadian. But like I said earlier, it makes complete sense because we're not talking about a huge difference here. It's a Canadian playing an, an American. It's... You know, it's not that big a leap at all. Go out for a couple of beers and end up on a fishing boat to Nova Scotia. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, it's a beautiful country up there. From Martin <laughs> Short to Jim Carrey and beyond, the Great White North has always been home to some very funny folks. Yeah, Jim Carrey is Canadian, right? I remember I learned that a while ago and I was like, what? This is like an idol to Americans. Like just, uh, <laughs> just a magical, historical, iconic figure. We worship you, Jim Carrey. Spoken! So it makes sense that when the Friends producers were casting the funny one, it was across the border that they found an actor who could pull off those great Chandler Bing lines. Yeah. You know what? I got two tickets to tonight's Ranger game. You want to come with me? I'm pretty sure they had a pretty difficult time casting Chandler because his lines were supposed to be, like, very easy because he's the funny one. He gets all the jokes but no one could deliver the jokes correctly, and then they found Matthew Perry, and he could do it in his his Chandler way. Cute guys in little shorts? Sure. <laughs> well, actually, it's a hockey team, so it's angry Canadians with no teeth. Perry was raised in Canada's capital city of Ottawa, but holds dual citizenship okay. and was actually born in Williamstown, Massachusetts to a Canadian mother and American father. Oh. However, his initial time in the United States didn't last long as he and his mother moved to Canada after his parents divorced around the time of his first birthday. There's no one okay. around, why don't we just take this one? <laughs> Moving back to Canada at, at one years old, basically raised in Canada. <laughs> and head to Canada. I was kidding. I wasn't, let's get going. Number three, Sandra O. Oh. Sandra O. Oh. I'm not familiar with much of her work, but I do. I will always know her for Grey's Anatomy. I will always know her for that. <laughs> and yes, I, shamel I shamelessly did uh, watch a little bit of that. <laughs> it's a good show. It's hard for me to accept compliments. Huge show in the United States, I might add. Like, at the when it was in its heyday, uh, one of the biggest ever in America. Because I'm Canadian. <laughs> And in Canada, uh, you cannot <laughs> brag. They don't like you being all briggity braggity. <laughs> so the Canadian response to a compliment is, sorry, not a- <laughs> A lot of Canadians seem very aware of the American stereotypes of them. And uh, honestly use it for comedic effect a lot. But are Canadians very aware of how the United States perceives them? Because uh, I find that very amusing to me. Uh, and a good sport, you know. Not only is Canada filled with funny people, the country has also been the birthplace of some of the most important doctors in history, including oh. one of the men who co-discovered insulin, Sir Frederick Grant Banting. Oh, so it only makes yeah. sense that when Grey's Anatomy was casting one of the best surgical interns on the show, all they had to do was look across the border to find Sandra O oh and cast her as Christina Yang. You should mm. get some sleep. You look like crap. I look better than you. Not possible. Oh was born in 1971 in Nepean, Ontario, which at the time was an independent city, but has since been amalgamated into part of the new city of Ottawa. She's okay. since gone on to receive rave reviews for her lead role in Killing Eve. When his family told the truth, no one is ever allowed to know the truth. Number two, Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. 
I feel like maybe I have heard this, then forgot, and now it's jogging my memory. It's all coming back to me. Ryan Gosling is freaking beloved in the United States. He is worshipped. He's considered, you know, a very desirable guy by a lot of uh, women. And honestly, I think everyone enjoys the movies that he's in. He's just a good actor. But uh, I... <sighs> I feel like I kind of knew he was Canadian, then forgot. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Not only did Gosling and Rachel McAdams date, they also starred in one of the great romance movies of the 21st century. Uh, yeah, Gosling and Rachel McAdams were in The Notebook, which, oh my goodness, The Notebook was obsessed, obsessed about for years in the United States. It still is. Oh my goodness, it was notebook hysteria. People <laughs> obsessed about it. And they were both born in the same Canadian city just two years apart. So, wow. so it's not going to be easy. It's going to be really hard. And we're going to have to work at this every day, but I want to do that because I want you. The Drive star was born in London, Ontario in 1980, but his father was a traveling paper mill salesman, so the family moved around a lot. I think okay. it was very helpful to grow up. Uh. Yeah, he's been in so much stuff. Like, you couldn't even name all the movies. All the substantial Hollywood movies he's been in over the years that he's just like uh, a A-list, A-list celebrity in the United States. Absolutely. Uh, so, interesting that he's Canadian. Pretty cool. In Canada or in a small town. Or, because you... I, I think if you grew up here, it might be hard to... Uh remember that there's a world outside of it, but I always felt like I had something uh, to go back to. Yeah, he seems very down to earth as well, which of course I like. Sling is now a huge movie star, but had some mental and physical issues with academics as a child. After being homeschooled and dropping out of high school while simultaneously acting on TV, he focused on more serious acting, ultimately oh. moving to the States. How come you know all this shit? I give me don't. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to or all of Keanu Reeves? New Reeves. Keanu Reeves. I mean, he's become one of the iconic, well now action stars of the United States. And you know, he was before with The Matrix, and uh, before that he was in some like funny stuff, Bill and Ted. Keanu Reeves has just been around forever in Americans minds and hearts. Americans love him. I don't think I've ever heard that he's Canadian. I did not know this. Um, I think, gosh, isn't he half Hawaiian as well? Where exactly are his parents from? Maybe Canadian Hawaiian? Am I remembering this correctly? Wow. He is the one. Not only is he the one, He's also Canadian. Keanu was raised in Toronto, but was born in Beirut, Lebanon in 1964, which makes all of us who saw Bill and Ted's excellent adventure in the theater feel nice and <laughs> old now. <gasps> yeah, it's hard to, you cannot overstate how like iconic Keanu Reeves is. Like the United States is obsessed with him. We'll see any movie he's in. He defines American, popular American Hollywood, to this day, like... From Speed to The Matrix, Reeves has put together a rather impressive career that spans over 35 years, and he shows no signs of stopping. Especially if they keep making John Wick movies every few years. Yeah. Although his name may mean cool... It's funny because a lot of Americans would call him, like, a modern and classic American action star. Absolutely an all-American man. Uh, but he's Canadian, so I bet a lot of people don't know that. Breeze over the mountains in Hawaiian. Reeves is still a hot... Though his name may mean cool breeze over the mountains in Hawaiian. Reeves right. is still a hot Hollywood commodity today. Yeah. Uh, working again? No, I'm just sorting some stuff out. I'll leave you be then. <laughs> Good night, John. Good night, Jimmy. Here is one way to spot a real Canadian. They will not misuse the word A. I definitely a. use it, but I don't misuse it. 
Yeah, I've learned about A. It's more of a way to turn your sentence into a question, right? And it's at the end of the sentence. I'm learning. I'm learning some stuff, you know? Retaining something in here. Like, it's kind of a replacement for right or do you agree? So, like, I would say, this was a great list. What does this have to do, what does this have to do with the uh, Canadian celebrities? Okay. okay. That is correct. Anyway, be sure to let us know in the comments about your favorite low-key Canucks, or come tell- Okay, I think that's it. That was by Miss Mojo, one of the Mo Watch Mojo channels. Very nice, very cool list. That was exactly what I was hoping for. Man, I think like nine, eight or nine of those celebrities, I had no idea were Canadian. And that I would consider all those people to be like classic or iconic American Hollywood A-listers. Some of them were B-listers as we call them. All of them famous in the United States. And when people get real famous in the United States, I think Americans just tend to assume that they were born here when they have an American accent. You know, the American accent and the Canadian accent, let's be honest, it's there's basically no difference. Maybe a few words are pronounced differently. If you're French Canadian, you're gonna have probably a different accent. And depending on where you live, we won't get into the semantics of it. And uh, yeah, America certainly has a lot of accents, but I'm not gonna get into all that. Uh, I just wanna say that this video was extremely fun, interesting. Gives me a lot of appreciation, a lot more appreciation for the talent coming out of Canada that uh, is really shaping a lot of American culture, to put it like uh, seriously. A lot of Canadians are huge monumental figures in American pop culture, which is awesome. Uh, although it's kind of sad, a lot of Americans don't know it. <laughs> but uh, hey, at least I know it now, <laughs> and you know it, so. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, feel free to leave a comment or give it a like. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, stuff I have never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.